What's going on, Vapor fans? Welcome to a brand new, exciting new year, 2017 Dawn of a New Day. So, what are we going to talk about this time? Well, uh, I thought that we would kick things off with doing an educational series the way that PVA initially started with doing a lot of educational videos. So, uh, what are we going to talk about? Let's talk about fused claptons. Okay, I'm going to go more in depth with fused claptons and tell you the difference between good ones and bad ones okay and um <clears throat> for the most part what is the big deal about them well <clears throat> for this year um you know talking to a couple of friends and stuff like that uh, i'd like to give a big shout out to my good friend kent hill you guys know him as twisted messes this year we met in vegas and uh at, at the uh, vpx expo and i got to uh, talk to him about uh you know coils and things like that <laughs> and really get the skinny on things right so i asked them what is the truth behind all these coils really you guys build a lot of coils your channel is basically you know built on uh, uh you know coil building and stuff like that so i, I really want to pick your brain and 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 uh tell me more about what you think about this stuff well it turns out right that um any professional will tell you that uh as far as like you know the different kinds of coils that are out there right uh some of them is exactly what you think it is right mostly aesthetics and then there are coils out there that are actually built for very very good performance okay sometimes the art takes the performance you know uh to another level and sometimes it goes down on the spectrum a little bit okay but what people should know is that um generally the best coil that anybody should be spending their time on and vaping on and using is basically the fused clapton coil now why is this because the fused clapton coil has stage heating and it holds very nice juice pockets okay however what most people don't know is the difference between a good fused clapton coil and a bad fused clapton coil and exactly what the ranges of those things are so we're going to get in depth with that today okay so right now we're going to dive down and i'm going to show you a couple of examples of coils and stuff and i'm going to show you a couple of examples of bad coils and explain to you the differences between all of them and the solution that we've came up with in order to combat this okay so you guys ready let's dive down and take a look together Here's a couple of examples of fused claptons that are put together uh, that are just fresh off of the drill and they're not rolled up or anything like that. I just wanted you guys to take a look at the end results of things, okay? So you guys have probably seen different kinds of uh, tutorials and stuff and what happens is that there's going to be like a couple of twists inside of them. But now as I bring this closer over to the camera to show you guys, uh, this is a fine example of a high quality fuse clapton okay so uh what is the difference between a good one and a bad one well we're also going to have to pull out a bad one to show you guys the difference okay so um you've probably seen something like this clapton coils right they're being sold everywhere in like little jars as such and i'm going to open this one up and you're not going to notice too much of a difference right uh, looks like a Clapton coil. It is indeed a clap, uh, fused Clapton coil, right? And let's bring one out. So the difference in this versus the ones that I have laying down over here is that the wrapping wire is in 32 gauge, okay? And this 32 gauge wire is way too thick. You can see the wrapping wire, okay? And what happens when you have wrapping wire that's way too thick? Well, you'll still have the juice pockets, all right, so what happens is that when you vape on this coil, it's still going to be a pretty flavorful coil. But the issue is that this thing is going to ramp up very, very slowly because it doesn't participate in the stage heating concept because the difference between the gauges is too close. Okay, rather that you have coils that are built more like this, they're silky smooth. Right, coils like this okay is going to have the proper stage heating effect because the uh, wrapping wire is much much thinner and it's going to heat up first so that it helps the inner core wires heat up as well okay so uh, let me go over and sh show you a different setup to explain what is exactly happening here so here I have for you two mods okay now both mods are the same mod and we're going to set them both 
at 50 watts and you'll see that the resistance is very very similar one at 0.39 and 1.35 okay so very very close in 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 uh, resistance right so this is your basic round wire build and then this is the uh, clapton that i earlier said that it was a bad clapton okay so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to fire them both at the same time so ready one two three You can see that the basic round build was able to ignite much faster than this one would have. And it's also dissipating at a rate of equal amount. Okay, so this is not that great of a Clapton build. Here we will be replacing the red mod with a black mod. And the black mod will have a fused Clapton that is wrapped in a much higher gauge than the 32. Okay, this one is wrapped in 40 while this one is wrapped in 32. And let's fire these both at the same time. Again, also at 50 watts. One, two, three. I even had to let go of this one first so that it doesn't overheat. Now I will show you the heat dissipation. If we were to light these two up to pretty much the same and then let them go at the same time, you can see that the heat dissipating off of the black mod is much faster than the heat that is dissipating off of the white mod. So guys, what are we seeing in these scenarios? Well, what happens is there is something that is very important in all coils, okay, which is about heating coefficients. Heating coefficients is the idea of the uh, ramp up time and, uh, and and the dissipation still making the coil very very efficient okay when when we don't meet the heating coefficient it's kind of like the equivalent of say taking a very huge gauge wire a very thick gauge wire and because you wanted to meet a certain high ohms right you would give it way more wraps than necessary this is exactly why uh, normally that when you see people wrap their coils and stuff they usually go with five to six wraps five six seven Seven wraps eight wraps maximum okay and if you need it to uh, reach a certain target ohm or whatever depending on the spectrum you would go to the next state gauge of wire in order to do so you wouldn't just continue to keep wrapping right because what happens is that the performance of the coil will be slowed down it, you will retard the build okay I don't mean that in a stupid way I mean that in a slow down kind of way so again, what are we seeing here in the video, right? Well, the mod on the left and versus the mod on the right, one is going to heat up much faster than the other one is because of the stage heating effect. So let's come back down again and talk about the difference between these coils. So recently we've noticed that these types of coils have been really circulating the market um, with, you know, uh, 24 gauge on the outside and then 32 gauge on the inside and they call themselves Clapton coils, okay? But these coils are going to be a lot easier to produce than other coils because uh, using a heavier gauge in order to wrap these things, you'll be able to create more coils much, much more quickly. So coils like the one that you see here are actually the type that is cheating people. Although they are fused Clapton coils, they don't perform well at all. So I've decided to go ahead and release my own coils so that people can enjoy the way they were supposed to be made. As you can see, they come in three different sizes. This has the core wire of 228 wrapped in 40 gauge. This one is 226 wrapped in 40 gauge. And then 224 wrapped in 40 gauge. If we go any thinner than 28 gauge, then it will put way too many twists and bends into the creation when the coil is being made. When you go any higher than 24 core, then it becomes too difficult to bend and twist into a coil. Hence, the only three plausible sizes are 28 core, 26, and 24. The reason for 40 gauge wire is because we want to go as high up as possible for the best performance. But the reason why we don't go any higher than 40 gauge is because there is a high chance of the wire snapping during the creation process. So although there are some coils out there where, uh, you know, people hand make it with like, you know, 42, 44, something like that, uh, that is a very, very tedious process done by hand. And a coil like that is usually very expensive. So let's take a better look at the quality of the coils that we're carrying 
and pe that people should be using. It's very fine, very neat, versus the coils that are out there that's basically cheating folks in performance. So both look very clean, very nice to the eye. However, when installed, they fire very differently. You can see that the red mod ignites much faster than the white one does. Heat also dissipates much quickly in the red mod. So guys, why is this so important? Well, because your fuse clapton, it needs to ignite quickly and then it needs to dissipate very quickly so that number one, your RDA cotton is going to stay fresh for a longer period of time. And also for you guys out there who are using RTA systems, your tank, the residual heat is not going to continue to cook the juice. See, over longer periods of time, say like, you know, you go out, you're gonna go to work, you fill your tank in the morning, uh, sometimes if you don't finish your tank, have you ever noticed that your tank and your juice has gotten very dark by the end of the day? Well, this happens because the coil itself, it's not dissipating heat fast enough. So the residual heat is continuing to cook and steep the juice that is in the tank, resulting that the juice inside is not going to stay as fresh. So guys, I want to show you a vapor production test between a regular build and a Fuse Clapton build. Okay, so both have 50 watts over here. Now the black mod is the one that's going to be with the Fuse Clapton and the white mod is using a basic round build. So I, I just want you to see the vapor production. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, did you see more of a wide puff cloud coming out of the black one over the regular build? Let me explain why. As we build larger and larger coils, the wick that we put inside of the coil, well, we're only going to be cooking the outer diameter of things, okay? Eventually, you're going to get to a size. We're not going to be cooking the direct middle of the wick anymore. We just can't get to it, right? So instead, what happens is that we build a type of coil that has a lot of juice pockets in it so that the moment we fire the coil, we're cooking juice not just from the wicks, but also the juice that is being absorbed by the coil itself. So many of you guys out there who have different kinds of RDs, kind of the new ones from the Geek Vape, the 24 um, uh, millimeter ones, or back then, you know, with the Twisted Messes RDA, the Velocity RDA, and you used to complain to yourself, wow, that was a lot of airflow in there. Who needs that much airflow? Right, the whole point of those designs was to use this type of coil. And if you use this type of coil, then your RDA is going to fill up with maximum flavor and you're going to be saying, wow, what a difference and what a new wave to vape. So guys, I highly recommend that you pick up all three sizes if possible, if you are the type of person who owns a little bit of everything, because the point of the different kinds of sizes, the 28, 26, and 24, is so that you make the distance in your decks uh, for different kinds of items. It's very intuitive, it's very straightforward. Say you have a smaller RTA system and you want to try a Fuse Clapton in there, you definitely go with the 28 coil because that's going to be a smaller coil that's going to fit in that. Um, 22 uh, millimeter atomizers that that, that are uh, kind of like the, uh, the Limitless RTA, I believe, and other kinds of uh, RDAs as such, then 26 would be good. But if you have a little bit more playground, right, kind of like the new Tsunami, uh, stuff from geek vape or possibly like you know a goon deck type of system then maybe you want to go with the 24 gauge again if you own a little bit of everything i suggest you pick up all three and you know you'll have uh, you'll definitely be able to, to to use them as for the pricing of these things goes i believe you'll all find it very very cost effective because they are going for exactly three dollars per coil regardless of the size so one jar will go for thirty dollars for <clears throat> Uh, for those of you who build your own coils, I think you already know how tedious and how much of the day it's going to take for you to go ahead and wrap your wires in 40 gauge anything, right? So all of these coils are made out of 316 uh, stainless, so it, it's definitely uh, the cleanest and safest wires that you could be using at the moment. See, what's really important about these coils is that they should be able to perform around the mechanical ranges. So what I'm talking about is that uh, all these coils around like 3.3 to 3.6 volts, it's going to be able to ignite 
and dissipate very, very quickly. And that's very important, especially for you guys out there who are still using basic tube mods and uh, parallel mech mods and things like that. These things are going to be working very, very well, as opposed to other coils out there where you're going to have to intentionally go a further step and then use you know series mods or you're going to have to use you know regulated devices and then start cranking things up to 80 and 100 watts before you get any kind of reasonable performance at all whether you pick up coils from pva or anywhere else okay keep in mind of what to look for the devil is always in the details i have always taught you guys these things in my shopping series before and i say the same things now okay so pay attention to exactly what the wrapping wire is going to be so what i recommend is something that's wrapped in the thinnest wire that you can find and just look at some photos to make sure that they're wrapped very evenly pick them up try it out and you will see that they are worlds apart different than just your basic round builds so, guys, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you guys learned something and picked up something along the way. As we always say here on PVA, question everything, do your homework, vape clever. Take care, everyone. To learn more about coils, batteries, and all things vape, click on the banner and visit PegasusVaporAcademy.com.